delve a little more into titration curves and being able to recognize exactly the information that you can find out when referring to a titration curve. Your titration curves can be any of these scenarios when you are titrating. Strong acid, strong base, strong acid, weak base, weak acid, strong base, and weak acid, weak base. Typically this one is not on the AP exam, but we'll at least look at it. We're looking at areas on the titration curve before, during, and after. So we're looking at the shape of that titration curve as well as the buffer range of that titration curve. A typical titration curve looks like this when you have a weak acid that you're titrating with a weak base. Your pH is always over here. Your volume of titrant, which is usually the base, is down here. So you're starting off with no base. So your pH of your weak acid would be your X squared over your HA equivalent to your KA. As you start titrating, you have this entire range here called the buffer range. Here is your equivalence point where that pH literally jumps up and you take the midpoint of that line. The halfway point would be the volume at the equivalence point cut in half. So that's a very useful point for finding the Ka of an acid. And then to define the shape of the curve, you add extra hydroxide so that you get this nice leveling off of the curve. So make sure you're familiar with all of the points and what substances are present at those points. Being able to recognize the usefulness of a curve when looking at this one, since you know you have a weak acid, Okay. You can see that the pH is starting fairly high. They don't give you the molarity, so you're not absolutely sure. One of the things that helps you recognize is this very long buffer and this less steep jump at the equivalence point. But remember, at the equivalence point here, you could tell it was a weak acid because your pH is certainly above 7. You could identify the Ka or pKa of the acid from the pH at the halfway point. The chemistry at each point is crucial. Again, quick review. The weak acid, pH by itself. The entire buffer range, which is where you have weak acid and hydroxide both interacting to form the A negative ion, so you've got an acid being converted into its conjugate base. At the equivalence point, you have all of the acid and base gone. You have only the A negative continuing to react with water, and this is what gives you that pH that's basic because now your weak acid has a strong conjugate base forming the hydroxide ion which is controlling the pH at the equivalence point. And then once you're past that point, you just have the dissociation of water and of course the extra hydroxide from the additional base is controlling the pH. Buffer region, right in here where you have both ions present. Here you have only the acid present. So a very common question would ask you what is present in greatest amount at certain parts of the titration curve. So right at the beginning, only the weak acid. Throughout the entire buffer region, you have both the weak acid and its conjugate base at the unique halfway point. Those are equivalent to each other. At the equivalence point, you have only the conjugate base, and that is reacting with water to control the pH. And then up here, you have the extra hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide that's controlling the pH. A strong acid, strong base titration curve still follows the same pattern. You can see that your pH with 0.1 molar, you can, that would indicate a strong acid. Your equivalence point at 7, your smaller buffer range, and your very steep equivalence point.
So recognize the shape, the pHs, the initial pHs, so that you could identify strong acid, strong base, or of course the reverse, strong base being titrated with strong acid. Weak acid, strong base, again you get more of this buffering, but definitely pH greater than 7. Your chemistry there. And then you could have a weak base, strong acid titration. The shape of the base curve is a little more difficult for students to understand for some reason. Here you would be right at your weak base, so it would be x squared over your molarity equals your Kb. This would still be your halfway point that you would get. Here's your equivalence point, and you can see that this would be a weak base because of the acidic pH at the equivalence point. So taking that volume, cutting it in half, coming up would allow you to find the Kb, just the same way that you would find the Ka with the weak acid titration curve. The shape of that curve, as I run this, you'll see as the Ka gets smaller and smaller, this flat area of the curve is shorter and shorter, and this buffer region becomes longer and longer. Here's a monoprotic acid, and as I run this, I want you to pay attention to the concentrations. Again, we're titrating. Here's the acid. Here's the conjugate base ion. The sodium ion is just coming from the sodium hydroxide, so that really relates to the hydroxide ion, but let's focus on these two ions right here. As we run this, you can see that as we approach the uh, halfway point, the concentrations of the acid and the conjugate base get closer. I'll try to catch that right at that point. Went a little bit past it, but somewhere in here these were equivalent. Now, once you're past that halfway point, you have more conjugate base than you have weak acid. And then at the equivalence point, all of that weak acid is gone. And you have only the conjugate base interacting with water to give you the pH of 9. And then the extra hydroxide. Here's a diprotic acid. We'll cover these a little more in class. You can see you have two equivalence points. The first one is more difficult to see than the second. Again, see if you can follow the weak acid, the first association, and then that acid in finding the second. So let me see if I can run this and we'll catch those halfway points. Missed that, but there we are at the equivalence point. So there's the equivalence point moving into the second. So again, now the halfway point of the second dissociation right about there. Well, missed it again, but you could see that somewhere right in here they were equivalent and then the equivalence point of the second, where you have only that second ionization ion, and then the extra hydroxide. When you're looking at a curve, there are your two Ka's and your two halfway points. So you can look at Ka1, Your Ka1 of 1 times 10 to the negative 3 is right there. Your Ka2, your pH at the equivalence, first equivalence point is right about here, and your pH at the second equivalence point somewhere in that range. A triprotic acid is even more difficult to follow. This one, um, it looks as if you can see three equivalence points. Usually this one is very difficult to see and pretty much it just blends in with that curve. But on this one we can see roughly three equivalence points and three halfway points. And if we looked at uh, the pKa1 that would 
be close to our pH of 2. pKa2 would be close to our pH of about 6. And pKa3, our pH of about 10. And these could be converted to Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. Notice that each Ka becomes successively smaller. That's why it's very difficult sometimes to catch this last one. If we follow the triprotic acid, we can see if we can follow it. It's going to be a little more difficult to see those points. We've got the phosphoric acid, and then that would be the biphosphate ion, and then the hydrogen phosphate ion, excuse me, dihydrogen phosphate, biphosphate, and then phosphate ion. So as we follow, there's your first, and you can tell that's close to your first equivalence point. So this is more like a real triprotic titration curve. There's close to your halfway point between those ions. That's better. Then the equivalence point for that. And then close to your halfway point for the other ion. So again, these are a little more difficult to interpret. We're going to titrate phosphoric acid in lab by titrating the phosphoric acid in a soft drink. There are several different acids in a soft drink, including citric acid and carbonic. So we're going to focus on those that contain phosphoric. We're going to get rid of the carbonic acid by removing the carbonation before we titrate. When you're looking at picking a pH indicator, you've already gone over this, you're looking at the pH changing okay, within a useful range of that indicator. So if we run this, we're looking if our pH is going to change somewhere around 8.5 or 9, we want an indicator that will have a pKa that's within that range. Okay. So we needed to find a pKa right in the range where the pH would change. So somewhere in this range. Picking an indicator relies on you knowing the Ka value of the indicator knowing the equilibrium between the base form and the acidic form of the indicator molecule, IN, simply representing the very large organic structure. So when the hydrogen ion is added to that organic structure, the indicator has a yellow color. When it's removed, it has a blue color. The equilibrium expression when you are first able to see a color change, your eye cannot see that color change until 1 in 10 parts have been converted. So when you have one part blue that has actually been formed, then your eye can see that first faint color change. So if you put in this 1 to 10 ratio into the expression, you can find the hydronium ion concentration and the pH at which you will first see that color change. Notice if these were equivalent to each other, you would be able to find the Ka of the indicator. When one-tenth of this form has been converted to that form, you will have your first visible color change. If you were looking at the indicator in its blue form, base form being converted to the acidic form, this would be your Ka expression. And that color change would be first visible when, again, you had 10 parts okay, to one part. And this time, your hydronium ion concentration would be the basic pH, and that would give you a pH of 8. So bromothymol blue with a Ka of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, or a pKa of 7, is only good at measuring a plus or minus 1 from the 7 pH. So it's good for a pH of 6 to 8. Outside of that range, it cannot 
pick up a change in the pH.